Welcome to Cyber GMBC. November brings the holiday season that closes out 2022. November also brings our election, Veterans Day, and Thanksgiving Day. We're also going to help Pastor Johnson celebrate his third pastoral anniversary. Our prayers is that this month's sermons will be informational, inspirational, as well as transformational. We welcome you to our Cyber GMBC worship experience. Hallelujah, good morning and welcome to our GMBC service this morning, amen? Amen, good morning to those that are in the house and good morning to those that are viewing us online through your various mobile services. We welcome you into this place today where we can come and serve and praise the Lord in community, amen? For the Lord is good and his mercy endure forever, amen? Amen. I'm going to read today from Psalms 150, if you will stand for the reading of the word. It says, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the tremble and the dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbal. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbal. Let everything that has breath millennial minister preached last Sunday and she preached from the book of Mark chapter 10 on the story of Zacchaeus and the title of her sermon was that same energy uh -huh. amen yeah. and those who are Bible scholars you know that Zacchaeus went up into the tree to get Jesus attention uh -huh. and he was calling out to the Lord amen uh -huh. and the people were like he needs to be quiet right, right. right? But he got more than loud, amen, because he wanted to be seen by Jesus, yes. amen. Yes. How many of us in the house today want to be seen by Jesus? Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we magnify your name today. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory that you so rightly deserve. We thank you, oh God, because you are mighty in battle. You are mighty in our lives, and we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we bless your name today and give you the glory for you woke us up this morning to start us on our way that we may come into the house today and serve you. Lord, we ask that you just permeate this place today with your Holy Spirit. Move up and down each and every row. Move up and down each and every hour, Lord. Anoint our pastor with the wisdom and knowledge and understanding. Fall afresh on him, your anointing oil, Father. Let us have spiritual ears to hear and spiritual eyes that we may see what thus said the Lord. And Lord, as we get your word, let us not let it not fall on deaf ears. But when we leave this place, let us go and be the light that shines in the darkness that someone may say. What must I do to be saved? We thank you, Lord, for your presence, power, and your patience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. and mercy 
Praise you to your grace. 
Just shout, Lord, I thank you. Come on. start because I'm going to run if you don't start. Yeah. 
are thankful for this day. Lord, we are thankful for this day. Lord, we are thankful for this day, oh Lord. Every day, Lord, we are thankful. Lord, we come now asking you to give us a word for these, your people, oh Lord, as we commemorate, as we remember, as we reflect upon this upcoming Thursday that has been designated as Thanksgiving Day. But Lord, we know every day is a day of Thanksgiving because you've been good to us, Lord. Not just the last Thursday in November, but Lord, you've been good to us every single day, Lord. Every hour, every minute, every second. And Lord, we simply say thank you. Lord, I ask now that you give me a word. Lord, I ask you to anoint me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, O oh Lord. To let your word come forth with power, anointing, and with might, O oh Lord. Lord, that it will go forth and touch hearts, minds, and souls, Lord. That it will change hearts, and Lord, that it will be transformative as well as informative, O oh Lord. And Lord, that you will get the glory. Lord, I ask this now in Jesus' name. I'm not worthy to preach your word, Lord. But, Lord, you have called me. Lord, I'm not worthy of the past to these your people, Lord. But you have called me, O oh Lord. So, Lord, as I do what you have assigned me to do, Lord, give me preaching power. In Jesus' name, amen. Give it on to God, the head of all life, and to all of you, my brothers and sisters. We are blessed to be here one more time. Amen. We are blessed to be here one more time. And I can testify that many of you I've seen less than 12 hours ago. Amen. Amen. I had no idea that a celebration for Reverend Samples would allow me to do some pastoral evangelizing, amen, with some of our folks I hadn't seen in a long time, amen, but nevertheless, God has a way, 
Amen. And I'm going to take advantage of every opportunity that God gives. Amen. Amen. It's good to be missed. Amen. It's good to be missed. There is a word from um, the book and the gospel that is recorded. Amen. Of Luke. Uh, this may not be your typical Thanksgiving uh, message, but this is what the Lord laid on my heart. The 16th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, the 19th verse, beginning read, it reads this way. Jesus said, there was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen and who lived each day in luxury. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. The rich man died also and was buried. And he went to the place of the dead. Or King James says, in hell he lifted his eyes. There in torment he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted. Lazarus had nothing. So now he is being comforted and you are in anguish. I want to use for thought from which to preach the tragedy of unthankful actions. The tragedy of unthankful actions. Thanksgiving Day, my brothers and sisters, is a day that has been set aside, and I'm just going to keep it real with you because I do understand, and many of you are aware, that even in Florida, right now, they have what they call the Stop Woke Act. And the Stop Woke Act prohibits individuals from discussing matters of race in schools and in businesses because it just may make European Americans um, not look so well. But I've learned that sometimes you just got to tell the truth. Yeah. And you can move beyond pain once you recognize what the truth is. So right now, they, they are debating and they're trying to stop this from being done. But the goodness about the good word of God is that there is no muzzle that can be put on my mouth. So I'm going to share with you the history versus his story. See, it, it was in 8, 9, 1620. There were uh, a group of individuals who aboarded a ship called the Mayflower who were sailing from Plymouth, North, or Plymouth, England, and they were shifting this way. There was 102 passengers on this boat, and on this boat, once they arrived, they ended up landing in Cape, Cold, uh, Cape, uh, Cape Cod and other places, and eventually on this 66-day journey, they, end up, they ended up being closer to what we now call Plymouth in Massachusetts. Well, during this process, during this time, there was a situation where half of the, most of the individuals stayed on the ship. While, while they were on this ship, they were faced with diseases. While they were on this ship, they were faced with malnutrition, and they were, doing, they were going through some things, and only half survived the harsh winter because they had not been accustomed to this winter. Just by chance, there was a Native American who happened to come and to try to help them out and begin, he befriended them and began to talk with them. And then he went and got another Native American by the name of Sequento. And Sequento had been kidnapped and sold into slavery. Sorrento went to England, escaped from England, and he came back to America because this was his homeland. But there were a group of individuals that we later called pilgrims who end up being colonizers who, who came to America. Now, we are often told they came for freedom of religion, but we know that there's a little, not, there's some uh, misguided information in that freedom of religion because once we see the behavior of what happened when they arrived is anything but free and religious. Well, my brothers and sisters, they arrived and when they got here, one of the things that they discovered is that they were coming because they were, there were some 
who wanted to uh, re practice religion freely, and then there were others who came because they had heard something. They had heard about the possibility and the potential of prosperity in the New Americas. They had heard about land ownership in the New Americas. Now, America was not discovered because America was never lost. America had been here long before they had arrived, but for some reason, there are some people that can come to your house and say they discovered your house. Well, upon arriving and upon doing all this, Sorrento then began to teach them how to cultivate corn, teach them how to survive, and then they began to celebrate. And later on, they began to set aside a day. There were several days in the beginning that allowed them to celebrate the fact that they had survived the harvest, but understand that all throughout the world and all throughout ancient history, there has always been celebrations of the fall harvest, from the Egyptians to the Romans to, to other individuals. So this was nothing new, but it just happened to happen in America. Well, upon this celebration of this day. There were several days that were set aside, and eventually they came upon one day, and it was uh, several days that was been set aside. They decided on one day, and then President Abraham Lincoln decided during the midst of the Civil War that he was going to make it one day, which would be the last Thursday of November. Well, upon this, there was a sister by the name of Sarah, the same author who wrote the book, who wrote the poem, Mary Had a Little Lamb. For 36 years, she would go back and forth and try to talk to senators and send letters to presidents and governors to try to celebrate this day called Thanksgiving. And she's known as the mother of Thanksgiving. Well, eventually, Abraham heard her plea, heard her plea and decided to make this a holiday. And this was the first time it was nationally recognized as a holiday. Well, upon recognizing it as a holiday, then after a while, um, it began to move it, and it stayed in place until 1941. 1941, Franklin D. Roosevelt decided that he wanted to move it up a week because he wanted it to jumpstart the economy during the Great Depression. Y'all know something about that. I think they call that Black Friday now. They wanted to jumpstart the economy, but he met so much opposition that he ended up saying, okay, we're going to stick with the fourth Thursday of Thanksgiving. But please understand that what we are taught in our schools is not totally true. It was not some uh, peaceful situation for the Native Americans that were the ones who taught uh, those visitors how to cultivate and how to survive were often given gratitude and thanks were given uh, blankets that had smallpox and other diseases that were not familiar in this land. And then those that were not uh, annihilated from the diseases were annihilated by force of arms and their land was taken from them. That's the real Thanksgiving. But in the midst of everything, I still believe that there should be some time set aside to simply say thank you. Well, my brothers and sisters, we have many reasons to celebrate. We have many reasons to realize that we are blessed. And, and if you are blessed, you ought to be thankful because you are blessed. Well, let me help you out. If you have a bed to sleep on, you are blessed. If you have a table to eat food from, you are blessed. If you have a house to keep you warm when it's cold like it is outside, you are blessed. If you have clothes, warm clothes to put on, whether you wear long johns or not, in this cold weather, you are blessed. If you have a vehicle to ride in, no matter how old it is, it may be a hoopty, but if it gets you from point A to B, you are blessed. If you have parents who care about you, you are blessed. If you have children who obey and respect you, you are blessed. But let me stop this. Even if you don't have parents who care about you, you're still blessed. Even if you have children who are not obedient, you are still blessed. Because as long as you wake up and can breathe God's air, there's always an opportunity to get it right. Well, my brothers and sisters, if you have education opportunities, you are blessed. If you have income to live on, you are blessed. If you have a sane mind and you can think when you get ready to think, you are blessed. If if you have hands and can wave them and clap them, you are blessed. If you have feet and can walk on them, you are blessed. If you have a mind that can think for yourself, you are blessed. What I'm simply saying is that all of us can testify that we are blessed. 
Well, as we look at our text this morning, this th story, and I want to call it a story because it's in the midst of parables, but it's different than a parable. Jesus was addressing the Pharisees and scri scribes, and he's trying to get them to understand that God has parental care for everyone. And instead of a parable based on facts that names are mentioned, in this story, it's a story, and I believe it's a true story because for the first time, Jesus Jesus mentions names. You remember in all the other parables, he say a certain man, a certain woman. But here he talks about a rich man and his name's Lazarus. Now we know the rich man's name is Dives. Dives, which meant wealthy in Latin, he wore purple clothing, which was expensive and splendor, and it was a sign of opulence because purple was only worn by princes, nobles, and those of extreme wealth. Now, I want you to understand, not only did he wear the color purple, and the reason why the purple was so expensive was the color purple came from a special shellfish named Mutrix that was found in the Mediterranean. Not only did he wear purple, but he also wore fine linen. And linen from Egypt and similar to the silk of wrappings of mummies. And this linen was only worn by princes, priests, and the very wealthy. He feasted every day. He feasted well. Not just on holidays, but daily, and his riches didn't secure him from death. It's not told that he got his money from fraud. It's not told that he exploited folks. It's not told that he oppressed folks. It's not told that he did like a lot of American corporations that uh, uh, get uh, corporate or government welfare by tax breaks and tax cuts. And, 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 and they have their bills furnished by the poor and the least that can stand it. We're not told this, but that could be a sticky suspicion. Well, my brothers and sisters, and then there is the beggar, or who we call Lazarus. In the original language, La beggar means poor, and Lazarus in Hebrew means a man destitute of help, needy, or a poor man. So in society, the rich and famous are remembered by the name, not the poor, who usually become a statistic. There was no welfare, there was no disability, there was no SSI, so this brother was in bad trouble. He had been placed at the gates of Dives. He was laid there, literally being thrown daily at the gate on the property of the rich man. His familiarity became part of the street scenery and wasn't even acknowledged by Dives. His only desire was that he it was never mentioned that he could eat from Dives' table. His body was full of sores, ushers running, open running sores that were not closed, bound, or even mollified with ointment. The dogs had pity on him. Dogs usually were scavengers and they were usually attack folk, but for some odd reason they didn't not attack him, but they came and licked on his wounds. He then died, and his soul is carried by angels to Abraham's bosom. Being there was a paradise for all Jews believed that this was a place of honor. Now, his body was more than likely thrown in rubbish and sat on fire. This was the custom of the poor of that day. So uh, for those of us who sometimes have a problem and wonder if there's any spiritual connotation to being uh, cremated, this explains right now. There's no issue because once you're gone, you're gone. They can do whatever they want to with your body because they cannot touch your show. I thought I'd help you out right there. So then the rich man or divers died and was buried, and to be buried was an honor. Funerals were expensive, splendid, ostentatious, and often they were full of opulence. But the Bible says in hell or Hades, a dark, obscured place where judgment departed spirits wait on the final judgment. He lifted his eyes. He never asked, listen to this, to leave this place. Can I help you all? See, this is what happens when you're privileged. He's in a place of torment, but he never asked to leave. He wants to give orders. Y'all didn't catch that. He's in hell, and he's not asking, can I get out? But he's trying to give Abraham to give Lazarus orders. He says, tell Lazarus to go and dip his. See, this is what happened when you're privileged. You begin to think that everybody is here to serve you. You begin to think that folk just act your way because of who you are. But here he is. He's in hell. He is burning. And he wants to give commands. Sounds familiar? 
He wants to give orders. He says, tell him to dip his finger and place it on my tongue because I'm in need. Now, it's strange that every day Lazarus was at his gate. Every day Lazarus was hungry. Every day Lazarus desired crumbs off the table. Every day Lazarus wanted a little compassion, but he looked beyond him, and now he's in hell and got a nerve to tell him, to tell Lazarus to hook him up. Tell Lazarus to hook a brother up. I'm in torment. But I want you to understand that he did not go to hell because he was rich. I don't want you to miss the moral of this story because Abraham was rich and Joseph was rich and Solomon was rich and Philemon was rich and they died in the faith and Lazarus didn't go to hell because he was poor. Didn't go to Abraham's bosom because he was poor. I don't want anybody to misunderstand this. I don't want anyone to think that just because you may have a few coins to rub together that you're going to, that you're going to hell. And I don't want you to think because you don't have a few coins to rub together that you're automatically going to heaven. But I want you to understand that God has a way of changing situations. And that's why we were always told to be careful how you treat one another. Be careful how you talk about one another. Because life has a way of making you up today and down tomorrow. But then life and God has a way of you being down today. And the Lord can pick you up tomorrow. I need to talk to somebody because life has thrown you down. And it may appear as though you cannot get up. But the good news is you can be down. But with God, you can always get up. So, so the thesis of our thought for Thanksgiving today is that the choices made on earth will have everlasting consequences. Can I say that again? The choices made on earth. That's why every day is a day of Thanksgiving because you may not be going in the right direction today, but you can make a choice today on earth that will have an eternal ramifications. In other words, you can be down and out and you can turn to the Lord. You can come to Jesus just as you were, are weary, wounded, and sad and you can find in him a resting place and he can make you glad. What decisions they're made on earth can have eternal ramifications. Now let's review the three elements or the ungrateful actions of this person. First of all, it's a tragedy to have unthankful actions because an unthankful head produces an unconcerned heart. An unthankful head produces an unconcerned heart. All that mattered to this brother, Dives, was his wealth, his opulence, and his superlative lifestyle. The welfare of others didn't even interest him. It's no doubt that this condition was humiliating to Lazarus. He had to beg for his very existence. There was no snap cards. There was no SSI. There were no food banks. There was no mission from missionary. Or there was no mission from churches to say, hey, we're going to hook you up during the holiday, and we're going to make sure you got some food on your table. We're going to give gift cards. We're going to get some turkeys and give them away. None of that was happening. So in his day, he had to beg for his very existence on a daily basis. He had to depend on someone else to transport him back and forth forth every day to sit on the estate of Dives. He endured the stares of those who would just simply look at him and pass him by. He endured to face the undisapp uh, disappointment of being in despair and having folk looking at him and not looking on him. He ignored the beggar who laid at his gate. You can not, you can ignore, overlook, and disregard something for so long. You can look past some folks for so long that you become insensitive to their situation. And as a child of God, we can never become so insensitive to the needs of other folk that we begin to ignore other folk. 
if something in you allows you to ignore folk, there's something ain't in you. You'll catch them when you get home. See, somebody needs our love and compassion. Someone needs our concern and prayers. Someone needs a helping hand. Someone needs to know that we really love them and someone really cares about them. Someone needs to see our Christ-like example of what it means to be a child of God. What that means, never look down on those who may be struggling beneath their burdens. Never look down on those afflicted with pain and suffering. Never look down on those who are fighting what it looks like and look like they're losing their battle. Never look down on those that are suffering from a broken heart. Never look down on someone who's dealing with mental issues and situations. Never look down on anyone unable to provide for themselves. Never look down on those less fortunate than you. Never look down on anyone because you got to realize if it had not been for the the goodness of God, if it had not been for the Lord on your side, there go I. But I hear you saying, Dr. D, I ain't got a lot of money. So this sermon ain't about me. Yes, it is. I'm coming your way too. Because you may not be able to do everything for everybody, but doggone it, you can do something for somebody. Second thing that an ungrateful head produce is an unfaithful steward of God's goods. <laughs> see, see, this is what we didn't catch in the, in, in the story. He had money. He had things, but they were God's things. I believe it is the Bible that says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I believe the Bible also says that the, he owns the cattle on the thousand hills. I believe that everything that was made came from God and God made it. I believe everything belongs to God. Here it is. Here it is. What he had did not belong to him exclusively. And it needed to be shared. See, he failed to realize that he wasn't God, that he was God's trustee. And the wealth and influence he could have used to give God the glory. He could have used it to be a blessing to his brother and his sister. But he decided to be selfish with what God had blessed him with. I keep trying to tell y'all, you are blessed to be a blessing. You are not blessed to hoard your blessings. You are not blessed to accumulate all of your blessings and to showcase them and to drive them and to wear them. But if the Lord has blessed you every once in a while, you ought to have some compassion in your heart to be a blessing to somebody that's less fortunate than you. And I know that there are some folks who are dark struggling. I know there are some folks who, who don't want to do nothing with their lives and I'm not talking about them necessarily but there are some folks who I keep trying and they cannot get ahead. There are some folks who want better for their families but maybe they need a kind word. Maybe they need a hand up. Yeah. What joy does diabetes forfeit because he wouldn't address the needs of Lazarus? You ever been a blessing to somebody? Help me now. Have you ever decided to help someone else? Is there not joy when you are a blessing to someone else? Does it not make you feel good on the inside? Now, I'm not talking about the trying to hook folk up where you bless somebody and then tell everybody. That's not being a blessing. That's being a show off. Because when you are truly a blessing, you don't care if nobody, matter of fact, you would prefer nobody know. Because you realize that God has blessed you and you want to, you realize that folk in need have dignity. Folk in need are not necessarily standing in line and want folk to know they've been worked on and they've been helped out. That's why we never publicize who we are a blessing to when our mission comes around. We never tell you names, we tell you individuals. Because their name is not important. The important thing is that we help somebody along the way. Because we're not trying to brag and boast about what we're doing because we're not doing it in the right spirit. But we do it because we realize there is a need. See, whatever God has blessed you with is partly to be a blessing to other folk. See, God sometimes blesses us to see how we're going to act. Because, see, some folk can't stand to be blessed. 
They can pray, Lord, hook a brother up, hook a sister up, and then the minute the Lord bless you, you lose your natural mind. You can't stand to be blessed, but I want to be one of those kind that the Lord can keep blessing me over and over again because God can trust that I'm going to try to help somebody else along the way. God can trust that I'll look and see that there's a need. I really would like to keep this money, but there's a need to help somebody else that's less fortunate, so I got to do what I got to do. See, see, you got to use your advantage to the advantage of the disadvantage. I think I just said something. You got to use your advantage to the advantage of the disadvantage. That means when you know that some folks are catching a raw deal and you have a, um, a point of influence and you have a way to hook them up, you got to hook them up. Again, I'm not telling you to give handouts, but you ought to stick your hand up to help somebody get up. You ought to be willing to help somebody along the way. You ought to be willing to put in a good word for a brother or a sister. You ought to be willing to make certain that things are done right when you have control, when you have influence, to make certain that things are done the right way. We don't need no more door gatekeepers. And not our ministry, but I'm talking about those, uh, those, 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 those uh, what did I call them last week, a couple weeks ago? Those slave catchers. We don't need none of those kind of gatekeepers that want to make sure that can't nobody else get in. But we need some folks that's going to bust doors open like Biggie, open the door, or kick in the door with the 4-4. Four four. We need some folks that's going to make certain that there are opportunities for other people. See, you can share something that God has blessed you with, with someone else. It's okay. If the Lord has blessed you, you can share what the Lord has blessed you with, with someone else. Matter of fact, I believe that's why God blesses us, so that we can be a blessing to someone else. See, we live in a country that believes in and in, in strives talking about independence, but we have never been independent. We are interdependent. That means you need me and I need you. Ain't nobody ever pulled themselves up by their own bootstrap. One of the biggest lies in this country, everybody got ahead because they stood on somebody else. I know y'all in here ought to know something about that. Don't think that this nation became rich overnight. No, this nation had 400 years of free labor. And if I start a company and got to pay my employees, I ought to be rich. Then finally, an unthankful head produces an unprepared future. And again, this man was in a position to change lives. This man was in a position to help his fellow brother. But this man's wealth and possessions did not allow him to be concerned about someone else. And see, you can never get so wealthy. Never get a, so many pennies that you can rub together, so many coins that you can rub together, but then all of a sudden you begin to distance yourself from folks in need. Now, I'm not telling you to be used by folks because there are some folks that will only come around when you got something to give them. You don't believe me? Fool around there and hit the lottery and let folk know. <laughs> Fool around there and get an inheritance and let folk know. Fool around there and get a lawsuit. And you'll have more family and friends than you ever knew you had. And you demand at every family union, you see some family members you ain't never heard of. But I'm not talking about those individuals who are not willing to do for themselves what they can. But I'm talking about persons who have tried, persons who are in trouble. And there are some folks who want to do right. But for whatever reason, they cannot do. But you got to understand that uh, I've been to a lot of funerals. Then drove in the hearse with the body to the cemetery. But you know something? I've never had a U-Haul. In front of the hearse, or behind the hearse, or in the whole funeral procession. Never experienced a U-Haul. Why? You can't take it with you. 
I mean, I, I'm being real. I mean, I'm not saying don't save up. I'm not saying consider the ant. I'm saying all of that. But I'm also trying to get you to understand that you can't take it with you. How many folk you know spent their whole lives stacking up and building up, and then they gone, and their family run through it quicker than a knife and butter? Amen. Can't say amen, say ouch. We need to understand that we ought to be planning for our eternal, not our ephemeral. See, our ephemeral is something that's only momentarily, that's only a little bit. But our eternal is what lasts for on and on and on, as this man did not plan. And one of the crimes that Jesus uh, had with this man is that he did not alleviate the pain and suffering of his brother. He allowed his brother to starve on his property. Every day, he was on his property. Every day, he had the opportunity to be a blessing to this man. Every day, he could have reached out and gave the man crumbs that fell from the table. Truth be told, he could have giving the man his lunch. He wouldn't have missed it. He could have invited the man in to eat. He wouldn't have missed it. Because what I've discovered with God is that when you are intentional in being a blessing, God allows the blessings to reciprocate. And it's a boomerang effect. Is, is there anybody that can testify that you decided to be a blessing to someone else? And before you could get finished being a blessing, you were blessed. Y'all didn't catch that. Before you were finished being a blessing, you were blessed. In other words, God does not tell you to give, and God will not give it back. But God wants to test us. So this man had an opportunity. Don't forget to plan for your future. As you go shopping on Friday. <laughs> and Thursday evening. Remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. Don't you be around here running yourself into debt. Then you run into H&R Block. July the 2nd, I mean January the 2nd. Rushing to get your income tax return. And then when you get in such a bad way that you fool around there, you're going to give them money on your money. And they're going to take money off of your money to give you your money back. Let me say that again. Yeah, it, it sounds crazy, but I want you to understand what I'm saying. You're going to spend more than you have trying to impress folks you don't like and who probably don't like you either. But you want to play the game. You want to go ahead and front. And MC Breed told you ain't no future in the fronting, but you want to go ahead and play the game and act like you're doing all of this so you can try to impress somebody. And then before January the 3rd come around, you rushing, calling the church, hey, I need my tag, I need my stuff, I need to know what I gave. And then when the report come back, I gave more than that. Maybe it was when you were asleep. <laughs> Help me, somebody. Then you run and trying to get it back where you will pay h and Block a fee to give you your money. Now, they call it early tax return. They call it all they want to do. It's, it's a game. They are taking money, your money. They are charging you a fee on your money. Because you're not willing to wait a week or two because you didn't overspent your budget. Well, Pastor D is going to help you out. Get you a budget, which means treat it like a layaway. I like layaways because with a layaway, you cannot overextend. If you don't have it, you just can't get it. Well, that's what we need to realize. I know that we're in the age of credit cards, and everybody telling you they pass you during the holidays. They give you the price break checks. And they tell you, you deserve more. 
and you can go ahead and charge it on up, and then you got six months, no interest, all in an attempt to lure you in. But what they don't tell you is that if you don't pay it off in six months, the interest goes back to day one. See, they don't tell you that. And then you find yourself in debt over two days, really one day, Christmas. Now, I'm not saying don't get gifts, but I'm saying be wise. Don't overspend because it's not about gifts in the first place. It is about the celebration of Jesus' birthday. Now, I know that historically speaking, it's not the actual day, but it's the day that we set aside to recognize the birth of Christ. And so this man, this man, this man, this man, and I'm going to let you go. This man now finds himself in a situation where when he could, he wouldn't. And now he, well, he don't even want to. Because he didn't ask, could he come back? Then later in the scripture, I didn't read this part, but later in the scripture, it talks about the fact that he said, well, send him back because I got some brothers and I got a daddy and we all grew up in the same house. And if you, if you send him back, that will convince him. But look, listen to what Abraham tells him. He says, well, you know what? He's got preachers. He's got prophets that are living. And if they will not hear the living, what make you think they won't think he's a ghost? He's in hell. He's not asking to get out of hell. But he's asking for Lazarus to be his. Dip his finger. And then if he can't dip his finger, send him back. <laughs> make him work for me. But when I was in the position to help him out, when I was in the position to hire him, I wouldn't do it. But now I want to hire him for free. All right, let me end this. My brothers and sisters, we ought to have thankful actions. We cannot be found with unthankful actions. My brothers and sisters, we ought to be thankful for the actions that God has done for us. We ought to be thankful for the actions. Okay, okay, okay. You see, we ought to be thankful for God's glory because God's glory can transform the ugly into the beautiful. It can transform the weak into the strong. It can transform the poor into the rich. It can transform the disease into the healthy. It can transform the worst into the best. It can transform the last into the first. It can transform the good into the bad. We ought to thank God for God's love. For God's love is higher than the oceans. His love is higher than the heavens. His love is deeper than the oceans. His love is lovelier than the sunsets. His love is sweeter than the honeycomb. His love is greater than the universe. His love is fresher than the morning dew. His love is the healing for every wound. His love is the comfort for every sorrow. His love is the assurance for every despair. His love is the provision for everything that we lack. His love is the solution for every problem. We ought to thank God for God's power. For therefore, no circumstance can restrict God. No adversity can hinder God. No situation can constrain God. No power can control God. No enemy can defeat God. And no force can limit God. Then we ought to thank God for God's grace. It's what makes heaven heavy burdens bearable. It what makes high mountains climbable. His grace makes deep valleys crossable. His grace makes painful suffering endurable. His grace is what makes di big disappointments faceable. His grace is what allows lonely nights to be livable and daily pressures to be manageable. But thank God for Calvary. It's where he found our thirst and he quenched it. At Calvary, he found our hunger and satisfied it. At Calvary, he found our trouble and cured it. At Calvary, he found our lost and returned it. At Calvary, he found our anxiety and assured it. He found our burden and lifted it. He found our trials and faced it. He found our curses and destroyed it. 
he found our battles and won them. He found our soul and redeemed it. Well, my brothers and sisters, we have a sister in this church that seems like an angel. Her name is Sister Fuqua, but her diamond song that she sings in this church, her call what you will, her go-to song is a song that was written by Walter Hawkins, and it simply says, tragedies are commonplace, all kind of diseases, people are slipping away, economies down, people don't get enough pay, but as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. And then the second verse says, folks without homes are in the streets and drug habits. Some say they just can't beat. She says murders, muggers, and robbers. No place seems to be safe, but you've been my protection every step of the way. And I can say thank you for all you've done for me. And then she says, I want to thank you for your love. I want to thank you for your power. I want to thank you for your protection every hour. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody here that's got enough thankfulness in your heart where you can tell the Lord, thank you, Lord, for being a friend. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for picking me up and turning me around. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Tell the Lord thank you. If you've been again, tell the Lord thank you for waking you up this morning. Tell the Lord thank you for clothing you in your right mind. Tell the Lord thank you. Don't worry about your list, but tell him thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for love. Thank you for strength. Thank you for determination. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. Thank you that you sent your son and he died on the cross. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Don't be unthankful because you may not have what you want because God will give you what you need. And I any habit, any witnesses that can testify, I may not have what I want, but every time I turn on the light switch, the light comes on. I may not have all that I want, but when it's cold outside, I can go to my thermometer and turn on some heat. I may not have all that I want, but every time I go in my kitchen, there is groceries in the cabinets, groceries in the refrigerator. There is food in the freezer. And then if I go to my garage or in my basement, there's a deep freezer that means that there's food on reserve. We've got to stop wearing so much about the material items and thank God for what the Lord has already given us. If you got a mind and can think for yourself, tell them thank you. If you got a heart and will love everybody, tell them thank you. If you got a mouth and will speak up for justice, tell them thank you. If you got a head and will use it to help somebody, tell them thank you. If you got hands and will build up folk and not tear down folk, tell them thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
the tragedy of unthankful actions. An unthankful head is bad for the heart. An unthankful head is bad for the heart. An unthankful head is bad for the heart. God wants us to have compassion in our hearts. There may be one here this morning who do not know the Lord in the pardon of your sin. There may be one here this morning who are saved, but you have decided that this is the day that you're going to make GNBC your church. We want to extend to you this opportunity. We would love to have you. But as I often testify, if you're looking for a perfect church, keep looking. If you're looking for a perfect pastor, you're definitely not looking at him right now. But if you're looking for a church where you can come and work out your soul salvation, where you will be taught what thus said the Lord, whether you like it or not, then you're in the right place. We would love to have you. If you're here this morning and you feel as though this is the church that the Lord is leading you to, won't you please come? Amen. Is there anyone here this morning? If anyone is listening, viewing, live, you can go to our various communication boxes and voice messages and things of that nature and let it be known of your desire and we will get in contact with you. Amen. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone this morning? Is there anyone this morning? Amen. She heard the sermon. She gonna do it justice and I couldn't do it so that's why I preached it because I couldn't sing it. Amen. While you're thinking about it, She's going to come and bless us. While you're making your decision. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. Economy's down. People can't get in the bay. But as for me.
bless you. Amen. We want to acknowledge our visitors that are here this morning. If you are here visiting with us, as you could just raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're visiting with us this morning. Amen. We thank God for your presence. Um, we do understand that uh, many of those that are visiting with us are related to Deacon Filey, uh, his son. Amen. And you say a great aunt? Mother in love is here, amen, from Mississippi, right? Amen. 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 Now, I apologize for the weather because last week it was all right. But that's Michigan for you. Amen. And we want to pray that the Lord give you all traveling mercies. Amen. We pray that you enjoy Michigan while you are here with us. Um, we are praying that the Lord will bless your stay, that you'll be warm. Amen. 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 Uh, and the grandson, amen, 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 amen. He like he ready for a goober bottle. You can put him right on the bottle, amen, amen. Very photogenic, amen. Yes. We got another visitor over here. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Well, we know one thing. You enjoyed yourself. Amen. Because I thought you was GMBC. Well, you could have gone ahead. We got some music right here. They, they hook you up. When you think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for you. Amen. Amen. We thank you for your presence. Amen. We are thankful for all of you all. We pray that you have a wonderful day. Um, we do want to uh, say that I'm glad that we got some thankful folks. Um, as you know, every year, over the years, we would give away baskets. And then when the pandemic hit, it became more feasible to just simply give away gift cards. And so we have done that already. Amen. Now I'm glad everybody clapping. Because now here comes the ask of your pastor. I didn't say anything to you all about giving. But I just preached a sermon about being willing to share what you had. And so I'm going to ask as we prepare for our tithes and offerings that you will put a special offering aside. And if you didn't bring your money, good news is we are electronically hooked up. You can go to Giblify. You can put in. Uh, you just make it out to the mission or simply say Thanksgiving and we will give that to, um, to help replenish because needs don't stop and, and Christmas will be here before we know it. Amen. And again, I believe that God blesses us to be a blessing and I will not ask you to do what I'm not willing to do. So I'm going to ask you if you're able to do at least $20, amen, towards this, please do so. My family, we're giving 50. Amen. We're giving 50. Amen. Because I, I cannot preach it and not practice it. At least I ought to be trying to do it. Amen. Amen. And so I want you that, that the Lord has blessed and you got a few more dollars. You know, you got a few dollars to rub it because some of y'all, y'all know you blow more money. Amen. 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 Casinos and lottery lines. And amen. So if you, if so, so you, can, you can blow some money, you ought to be able to give some money for a good cause that we may be a blessing again. We've already given the cards out um, to help those individuals and we span some of everywhere. 
Um, there are schools that we go to and we just pick families. Um, don't even ask the names. We just need families of Pope a need. And then we address the need and we try to give you a car. So I just want to be mindful of that. Um, if you're willing to do so, my brothers and sisters, again, I'm asking to at least give $20. Amen. 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 We, we, we quickly sold out $21 for a movie. As a matter of fact, I had to make more room. So I know we should be able to handle $20 to help a family in need. I mean, the Lord has blessings for this church. The Lord kept us when we couldn't see each other on a Sunday morning. Amen. And so we want to show our gratitude. Amen. Amen. We want to have thankful actions. Amen. Amen. If you're not able to do it, hey, I realize things can be tight. But I will tell you, if you trust in the Lord, if you trust in the Lord, and you'll realize that sometimes you got more than you thought you had, when you realize what you done threw away and what you done blown, amen, amen, amen. So I'm just asking you to take some of that, some of that excess money, amen, and, and, and give that, amen. Is anyone seeking cars, amen. Again, make it all to mission and put Thanksgiving on it so we'll know that it's designated strictly for that. Uh, again, we give, uh, and we're not always letting folks know who we're giving to, but we are a giving church, and we are a blessed church because of that, and I believe in that. So now I'm going to ask God's blessings upon our tithes and offerings. Then we're going to have our tithes and offerings, and then we'll go a little bit further. Lord, we come now in the name of Jesus asking you to bless us during this time of giving. Lord, we do not want to be like Dives. We want to share the resources that you have given us to be stewards over. Lord, that you can trust us with more, oh Lord. Because, Lord, we realize that a closed hand won't lose money, but it won't gain none either. So, Lord, we're asking you to make us benevolent in our giving, in our spirit, oh Lord, that we will be a blessing to others. This is our prayer. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. On your way out, you can drop them in the, recept in the receptacles there. Right there, there may be a basket. You can drop them in the basket. Amen. We, again, we are grateful to God for this day. Um, you all know what's going on at 530. Amen. Rekonda forever. Amen. I, I, I almost go wear my T-shirt like Sister Michelle, but I ain't want to get ahead of myself, so I figured to wear a Rekonda shirt. Amen. Rekonda style shirt. Amen. Uh, we're looking forward to going to see this movie. Um, but more so, we're looking forward to fellowshipping with our brothers and sisters in, in our own theater. Amen. Where it's just all GMBC. Amen. Amen. And family and friends. And so we're looking forward to that. We in theater number eight. Number eight. Amen. Amen. I ain't giving out no other numbers. Amen. Number eight. One. Amen. 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 Is there anything else that we need to cover? Oh, Thanksgiving service. Thanksgiving service will be here Thanksgiving at 10 a.m. Our traditional Thanksgiving service, and we just simply come and we share what we are thankful for over this past year in our lives, and then 11 o'clock, we out of here. So it's an hour of Thanksgiving for the Lord, for what the Lord has done. You're welcome to come. Amen. You, there's no dress code. Uh, just have on clothes. Amen. That's the only dress code. Have on clothes. Amen. Amen. Have on something warm. And we just come and we just sit back and just listen. Because I've learned a lot about other people when you realize what other people have been through. Amen. And as the saying goes, sometimes you can't, you don't look like what you've been through. Amen. And you never know who you encourage along the way. Amen, because they think they got it bad, and then they hear what you've been through, and they, be, they get quiet on their stuff. They're like, I ain't got nothing compared to that person. Amen. But that's what it's all about. Amen. None of us have had a, a rosy parade in life, but we are overcomers. Amen. I said we are overcomers, and we need to share how we've overcome to help somebody else come on over. Amen, amen, amen. That being all, uh, let us come for prayer. Let us come for prayer. Let us come for prayer. There will be no Bible study on this Wednesday. Amen. And some of you all are getting ready to prepare um, the birds and all that good stuff. 
we'll be finishing up in um, Romans in the following weeks, and then we'll begin um, the book of uh, James. Amen. The book of James will be coming forth. For those that would desire prayer, uh, please come to the altar. Amen. If you're willing to feel comfortable enough in touching hands, um, definitely do so. Uh, we do have um, hand sanitizer throughout the building. Most of you all got it on your purses and on your persons. Amen. And um, we still want you to practice um, wisdom. Amen. Because the virus hasn't gone anywhere. But I think we're a whole lot comfortable now in touching each other's hands than we were uh, two years ago. Amen. Amen. So we want to now look to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you've been so good to us. Lord, as we enter this season of Thanksgiving, Lord, we ask that you bless us, Lord, to be instruments of influence to others. And Lord, we specifically pray for those that are less fortunate. Lord, those that are in need of help those that are in need of care, those that are in need of love. You are a loving God, and Lord, we want to be used as your instruments to preach and practice love, agape love, that we may win over those who do not know you in the pardon of their sins. We thank you, and we praise you. Lord, every need that is at this altar, those that are grieving, oh Lord, those who have lost loved ones. We pray, Lord, for mercy. We pray, Lord, for comfort. For those that are traveling out of town, we pray for traveling mercies. For those that are traveling in town, we pray for traveling mercies. And Lord, we ask for safe returns from those that will go back home after the holidays, oh Lord. We ask that you be with them, keep them, lead them, and guide them. Lord, we love you. We ask you to bless our church family, Lord those that are viewing, those that are in person, and those that we're still trying to get back in this building, oh Lord. We ask you to bless us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask for your protection. We ask for your guidance. Lord, we pray that this holiday will be a blessing. Even to those that have lost loved ones since this time last year, and, Lord, this will be the first holiday season without their loved one, Lord. Bring comfort to their hearts, Lord. Bring strength to their minds, oh, Lord. Be for them what they need you to be. We thank you and we praise you. We ask your blessings upon us as we leave this place, oh, Lord. The roads are slippery, but, Lord, you are able to keep us, Lord. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Sister Lauren going to take us out. Amen. Amen. If you were blessed by the worship experience and would like prayer to give your life to Jesus or to join our GMC family, Please go to our Facebook page and inbox us or complete the new discipleship forms on our website, gmbcwestland.org, or even call us.